Hi guys, I'm Anime Mixer one AM1 for short, and today I'm talking about the Anime Awards 2018 because we need to talk about them, unfortunately. Or as I prefer to call it, the Hero Aka Awards Season 2. Because seriously, Hero Aka went away with basically any award it was nominated for. The only one it didn't get basically was Best Animation where Violet ever gotten one. And holy hell, it was so good that it didn't win there. If it had, there would have been a serious uproar. On the other hand, I think that if My Hero Academia had actually won Best Animation this year, I think people would have seriously seen that this system is flawed. Now this year, as well as the last one, there seems to be that one category My Hero Academia is in that everyone seems to agree it shouldn't win this one. It really shouldn't, because there's someone else who is much more worthy. Last year it was Anime of the Year, which well deserved went to Maiden Abyss. This time it was Best Animation, which well deserved went to Violet Evergarden. Both of these are cases where seeing My Hero Academia on there just kind of really... Oh no, please don't let this very popular anime take the spot for someone who's actually more deserving. And like I said, both times it actually hasn't won there, which has led people to say, see, not rigged. But which makes me go... Yeah, but they would try to make it seem partially not rigged by rigging it to lose something else. I mean, that's what it might look like. In if, if I was trying to rig some sort of vote or election or whatever, I'd probably, like something like this, I would probably try to make uh, the big favorite for me lose in some categories, but win in most, because that's what matters. So the big ones here are that uh, All For One won Best Antagonist, Deku won Best Boy, marking the second year in a row for a My Hero Academia character to win Best Boy. Last year was Todoroki, I believe. Christopher Sabat won for Best Voice Actor Performance in English for his portrayal of All Might. Which, may I add, isn't really uh, an award for My Hero Academia, it's for that specific voice actor, so it's not really for the show as such, I believe, but people still see it as, oh, this is a My Hero Academia award because popularity and honestly, I can't find myself to disagree with them too much. I I wish I could like go in here. I'm, I, I don't watch dub My Hero Academia, not because I'm a dub hater, but because I just prefer watching Japanese. It's it's the common thing to me anyway. Uh, Christopher Sabbath and his role, he probably did really well, but I still think that there has to be someone who did a better performance. And I think it helped his case to say that, oh, he related to this character. He said so in this clip that we got so during the award. And it's just, he's a very prolific voice actor in English. And so I think this, as well as My Hero Academia's general, uh, general popularity, help people go, oh, but it's All Might from My Hero Academia. Gotta, gotta vote for him, whoever the voice actor is. This is all speculation, but it does give that vibe. They also won best fight scene, which I can understand. There's a bunch of good fight scenes there, although I don't really get... I, I mean, the All for One versus All Might fight scene was very hyped. Everybody had waited for it for a long time. And of course, it was the mother of all punches that ended it all. United States of Smash! But as a best fight scene, I'd still take the Naruto and Sasuke versus Moshiki. Uh, fight scene from Boruto because Boruto has a lot of questionable fight scenes, but that one was genuinely good. It wasn't just good by Boruto standards, it was plain good. But I think My Hero Academia has an edge in one aspect because I think that people, when thinking about fight scenes, will latch onto a moment, a spectacular moment. Deku vs. Todoroki, the final boom between them. Old Might vs. Snowboo, Go Beyond plus Ultra, that moment. Deku and Baku were trying to bypass All Might during the exam. That moment when Deku punches All Might, that is the iconic moment from that fight scene. And so My Hero Academia keeps producing iconic moments within the fight scenes, even if the fight scenes aren't that good themselves. Certainly spectacular, certainly not bad. But you'll always find that there's a moment in the fight that everyone will remember. People won't necessarily remember the fight as a whole, but there will be one fight moment they will latch onto and go, that was awesome, that deserves the award. 
Again, there's some speculation and personal experience going on here, but this seems to be what I'm picking up. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But finally, the most cringeworthy award that My Hero Academia won this year was probably Best Film. Now, I haven't seen My Hero Academia film. In fact, I haven't seen any of the films that were nominated. Anime films really aren't my strong suit. But, you know, doing a little bit of a waltz around the great interwebs up until the award itself led me to believe that, oh, all these other movies that are on, they're really, really good, and specifically like this one and this one. Like, I'm not gonna mention names right about now, but let's just say that a lot of people that seem to have seen these movies and seem to know what they're talking about had an opinion that My Hero Academia two heroes did not really deserve to win this. And yet it did. Why? This stinks of popularity. But okay, so My Hero Academia won these five categories, and I'm gonna talk about the other categories eventually, but let, let's just remind you that this is one third of the categories. Like, there were 15 nominations, there were 15 categories to nominate in, and My Hero Academia went in in six of them and won five. They won a third of the nominations. Like, that shouldn't happen. Especially not for a show that's in its third season. Yes, we know My Hero Academia is good, nobody is disputing that. But seeing as, as a whole, as a wholly good show, and seeing every single bit that it's nominated for, two different things. Saying that it is good overall does not mean that every single part of it is the best. Unlike this year, last year, it won for Best Animation, up against movies. It went up against a movie, it went up against a silent voice, a movie, which has so much better quality overall, just in its animation, and it just went, yeah, Best Animation. It felt like My Hero Academia was flipping us up that year. And again, the animation is not bad, and you get these spectacular fight scenes, but overall animation quality? How do you compete with a movie like that? I know there are movies that are anime movies that have bad quality, but A Silent Voice certainly did not have bad animation quality. And it's just a case of My Hero Academia just going into a category and winning because it's My Hero Academia, and not because it is objectively the best in that category. Now, I'm not an expert, I can't say if Christopher Sabbath's voice acting of All Might was the best. I can't objectively say if My Hero Academia the movie was best. And stuff like Best Antagonist and Best Boy, those are very subjective. And of course, because My Hero Academia is a very popular battle shonen anime, it has a very good chance of going off with the best fight scene. But I think it's fair to say that the overall popularity of the show has enabled it to win all these awards. Because overall it seems to be a popularity contest, like that the, uh, that the votes that the public gives in matter the most. Now hear what you're saying, but there are judges, aren't there? Yes, there are judges. And what exactly do they do? In fact, I'm gonna send this over to a little clip from the Twitch stream. Miranda Sanchez is in the studio and she was a judge. And I'll let you uh, hear what she has to say about what exactly a judge does. So I have to say, also, I was a judge for this. Yes. So I kind of helped curate some. I was one of like 22, I believe. So, I, you know, Does one part of a lot. It's your yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah. It's not my fault. <laughs> I like to say it's not my fault. So judges help curate. So these judges are supposed to know what's really, really good and what really shouldn't be there. Nominated My Hero Academia, two heroes in there. And that's not the big flaw in and of itself. But the problem is that in this clip, you see her and Tristan Arcada Galant from Glass Reflection, one of my favorite uh, anime YouTubers, sitting in the studio and talk about how there's one movie missing, one called Machia. Now, I haven't seen Machia, so I can't really say, but Tristan is someone I would trust in matters concerning anime. However, he was not a judge, but Miranda was. And she agrees that Machia is missing. And I'm just saying, what? But you were a judge. Did, did, had none of the other judges watch it? Did, are, are you two in that studio the only ones who think Machia is actually good enough to be nominated? I mean, there were other movies that like that were far less good as far as I have been able to come up with in a very brief research. You know, I don't do much research, but I do a bare minimum to like gauge uh, 
uh, like popularities and such and quality. But is curating all the judges do? Is that everything they do? Well, according to a little extra tidbit Miranda mentioned, perhaps not. Now this is after Arcada is extremely upset that My Hero Academia won Best Film, uh, and Miranda explains how this is uh, partially public vote. Hey, remember that this is also a half fan voted thing as well, so mm. this is something that a lot of people picked as well, so. Half fan voted, what exactly does that mean? Because they said the same thing last year, that uh, the fan vote and the judge vote were half and half. And I don't get what that means! What does it mean that the fan votes count for half and that the judge votes count for half? They just say that and give no explanation to whatever that could mean! Crunchyroll, please, just specify what the heck you're talking about! What power do the judges have in this system? What power do the judges actually have when it comes to determining who wins? Based on what she said, they definitely uh, decide who gets nominated, they curate. But what, how do they vote and how much do their votes count? Do like every single vote of the judges count as like 50% of the vote divided by the amount of judges that there are? So let, let's say for simplicity's sake there were 20 judges and each one of them uh, tosses out a vote. And let's say there were 100,000 votes in a category, okay? That means 1% is, uh... 1,000 votes. 1% 1 of votes in that category would be 1,000 votes. That would mean that if you have 20 judges, they would have the power of 100,000 votes divided by 20. So each of them would have a 5% vote for each. I mean, each of their votes would count for 5,000 fan votes. And that's just really lopsided. And yet not lopsided enough to prevent My Hero Academia from winning. I mean, how do the votes even get carried out? Are they anonymous? Do they sit in a room and go, should we, I want to vote this? Do you want to vote that? Should we all vote for one thing? Do we discuss what is good and bad about stuff? Like, how does that happen? I want transparency from Crunchyroll regarding how this actually happens. Or else every single coming anime award from now on, I'm just gonna have Arcada's expression throughout the entire thing. My Hero Academia, two heroes. But now, apart from My Hero Academia winning five out of their six nominations, this anime award seems to have been better than the two that had preceded it, which is a good thing. I can't really complain about Irimu the Tempest winning Best Protagonist, because he's a genuinely good protagonist. He was one of the ones that I struggled, should I vote for him or should I not? But then I figured, eh, it's, it's an unfinished show, let's not do that just yet, let's see how it goes. Best Girl Sakura Jimamai from... Uh, what's the full title of it again? Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. Let's just call it Bunny Girl Senpai. Best Opening, Best Ending, probably good enough. They weren't really my personal favorites from the year, but I couldn't really see any glaring flaws with them. Best character design is a fun category, I believe, though it's kind of... that's It's a very subjective thing to taste and style, so it's kind of weird that it's there, I think. But mm, it, it's good enough, I guess. And Jojo winning? Well, Jojo is very stylistic and fancy. Best continuing series, Dragon Ball Super. I've never watched Dragon Ball, like, at all. But apparently this latest installation in the series is just good, I guess? I personally voted for Mega Sprite, but, you know, eh. I'm not gonna be upset. An anime of the year seemed to be a fairly popular one among many, and people accepted that Devilman Crybaby won the anime awards. It might also be because a lot of people just wanted the anime award sponsored by Devil May Cry to be won by the Devil May Cry Baby. <laughs> that was a running joke through the whole thing. It's Devil May Cry Baby 5. Now some of you might have noticed, hey, you skipped some categories, yes. The two best voice actor performances, the Japanese and English ones, and best director. I've already said why I may have a problem with Christopher Sabbath winning best voice actor performance in English for All Might. Uh, and then there's, in Japanese, there is Mamoru Miyano who won for his portrayal of Kotaro Tatsumi from Zombieland Saga. A show that I haven't watched, but I've seen clips of him and around that. He's, he's genuinely good, although I can't help but hear Ho oh, in Kyoma! Whenever I hear him. He's a genuinely 
amazing voice actor in Japanese as well, but I think his name is very well known to a lot of people in the anime community, and so it goes, oh, I know that name, I will select. Of course, it might just be because his voice acting was the best, as someone hasn't seen the show, I don't know, but his, his name was definitely probably the most well-known name among the Japanese voice actors who was nominated. But by far for me the category that just shouldn't have been here at all, and I mentioned this in my suggestions for how to improve the anime awards video, Best Director. Now this category was also won by Devilman Crybaby and its director Masaki Yuasa. And here is why I have an issue with this being a category, because as they said in the awards, a director is one who has the responsibility to make sure everything comes together they're responsible for the overall finished product. My issue with this is that we, the average person voting in this category, can't really see what's going on behind the scenes. If we were voting for best animator, rather than best animation for a series, then you know that there's a lot of animators on, a, on the list and you'd go, oh, but which one of these actually contributed the most and the bestest for all of this? We couldn't really do that, right? And I think it's kind of the same with Best Director. A Best Animator award wouldn't have worked because we couldn't see exactly who worked on what. Unless they let all that be public and let us see behind the scenes footage and all that stuff. And it just doesn't work like that. And that's how Best Director sort of doesn't work. A director does by definition work behind the scenes. We don't directly see their work in the anime. Sometimes the director is also working on the script or storyboard or something, but those cases are the exception rather than the norm. A director takes the material he or she has been given and tries to make the best out of them. The story, the animators and the animation budget they're given, the characters and how they act, and like ev every single detail, they just have to make sure this translates well to anime. But we can't see what decisions they have or haven't made. Who was responsible for making sure things were animated just that way? Was the director very hands-on and saying it has to be just like that? Or did the animators just do their thing and the director said, good, that's good enough, we'll take it. When the voice actors said their lines, was the director there going, ah, oh, you need to be softer, or you need to be more flamboyant, or you need to whatever? Or did the director in the end just go, well, that's good enough, and just take what he or she was given, and it happened to be good? Now, Masaki Yuasa is probably not an unworthy winner, I'm not gonna say that, I don't know, but it's just, I think the category itself is flawed because otherwise we're able to judge on things that we can at least observe. We can observe the fight scenes, we can observe the animation, we can ob observe and listen to the voice acting, we can observe the boys and girls and determine who we think is best, we can observe the antagonist and protagonist, we cannot observe the director doing stuff. What the director does is a mystery to us. We don't know where the director has actually done a great job and maybe some other times been barely prevented from making huge mistakes just because the team has gone, no, 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 you can't do that. Let's just, no, what if we do this instead? Please, this is that, no, not that way you're thinking. No, 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 no. And there's also a problem they uh, mentioned on the stream. I'm gonna let her take it away. If this is gonna be like the, you know, like the Oscars where best director always wins, like, like that show will be best, you know, anime of the year. Could be. Maybe, I don't know. Not me. Well, it was. Th that's also the thing that really irks me here is that best director essentially boils down to who delivered the best finished product. And the best finished product is ultimately gonna win anime of the year, which Devil Man Crybaby did. So I don't like this category, I think it should be gone next year. And speaking of things that should be gone next year, just a little reminder, I think that My Hero Academia should be outlawed from competing in next year's Anime Awards. You know why? Because Season 4 is coming, and it's gonna be amazingly popular again, and it's gonna sweep the awards for any and everything is nominated for if given the chance. I will allow it to be in Best Continuing Series, but nothing else. In fact, I think that anything that's season 2 and so on, or anything that has lasted for a year or more, like long-running shonen like Black Clover and One Piece, should be confined to best continuing series and not any of the other categories. Let the new shows dominate, let the new shows flow in and 
take everything. Don't let a veteran, which is what My Hero Academia is at this point, come in and just take everything because it's very, very popular and because it can. Long-running shows and season twos and onwards, just no. Don't let them take the general categories. Just let them, just let them, just not be there. Let other things grab the spotlight, please. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. I've talked enough about this Hiroaka Award Season 2, and I hope that next year, Crunchyroll will do better. They seem to be improving year by year, but there's always this one glaring mistake that we all sit around going, they shouldn't have done that. But we can only wait until the next Anime Award to see how that's going to turn out. But until then, remember, I have been Anime Mixer 1, and I approve of this video.